to read that. It's a love note from the Lord. God says he loves you so much. Don't blame yourself for the mistake. The mistake you did was to lie down with the person. But the child is not a mistake. It's a gift from God. Uganda is in the midst of one of the worst teen pregnancy crises in Africa. One in four girls here will be pregnant before they turn 19. You know, man, when you are young, you are young. You are young. You are young. You are young. She's pregnant. How old are you? 15. 15. Pregnancy Care Ministry is one of hundreds of Christian charities for pregnant women in Uganda and across the continent. These crisis pregnancy centers, or CPCs, have one explicit goal to prevent abortions. So this is this your is center? A yeah, this is a center, our pregnancy care ministry. Our services are based on, uh, we call it reproductive life affirming health care system because we want to protect most of the unborn children. This model, which pairs basic medical services with a heavy dose of religious rhetoric, is a direct replica of the thousands of anti-abortion centers in the U.S. established by the Christian right. Across Africa, American organizations provide materials and foot the bill. We got a donation. Mm -hmm. This is an ultrasound. So soon, very soon. You'll be offering ultrasounds. Ultrasound, uh, lab te testing. And who donated it? Uh, it is uh, through Heartbeat International Connects. Organizations like Heartbeat International are part of a global movement to end abortions, an effort that's gaining momentum after the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And in Uganda, a deeply Christian country, they're especially influential. Centers like this one present themselves as neutral places to receive reproductive care and guidance. But instead, Vice News has found they're actively pushing misinformation and scare tactics. The staff at these centers don't always wait for pregnant teenage girls to come into the centers, but they go into the community to sort of try and recruit young, early stage pregnant teenage girls to intercept them before they might consider options like going to a clinic that provides safe abortion. Uh, come in, come in. Oh, this is our youngest mother. <laughs> That's good. Rehema, who's five months pregnant, was recruited by her teacher to come to pregnancy care ministry. She became pregnant the first time she had sex with her boyfriend. I remember he told me that, relax. I know what to do, you will not get pregnant. And I told him, I don't want. And when you first suspected that you were pregnant, what kind of advice were you getting from people? Just what, nine months? Nature guau, no zala. No vela no mwana, no we never quit a mama. And what kind of things were the counselors at the center telling you? Bangambi okuwa mugum. Nti, pregnant is a gift from God. And right now, does it feel to you like it's a blessing? No. Even, I think it is a bad thing inside my body. Abortion is generally illegal in Uganda, but the law does allow for some exceptions, including when the mother's life is in danger. But Stephen Wambombo, like his counterparts in the U.S., never refers girls to legal abortion clinics. We, we confess we don't want abortion. And do you feel like you're leaving out information by not informing the girls that this could be an option? The world has become so, I don't know, human, everything is called rights, 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 equality, rights, rights. But can we look at some of the materials that you hand out? Like this one, the face of choice. It says, no, this baby was not burned in a fire. It was aborted. This is very difficult to look at. Right. If someone looked at this, we would think twice. 
the abortionist cuts the cord, lets the baby die in a basin, or chokes him or her to death. Yes. Now, this is not what an abortion is. These are facts. You believe those are facts? Yeah, I believe these are facts. Because we didn't print them here. Right. If they have traveled, we know where they came from, they're being used. Those so-called facts come from their foreign benefactors who provide basic training and informational materials and the prestige of international affiliation. The strategies employed in Uganda are often a direct copy and paste from centers in the U.S., right down to the props. I normally show them uh, some of this. These are babies in the, in the womb. So you give them the ultrasound and then you say, if you abort, it would be this size, this size. of a baby. And so for Fortunate Brittany became a counselor at the center after just a few hours of Zoom training from a Florida-based evangelical charity called Beautiful Feet. So now when we, they, they tell us that they, they squeeze the child themselves. Mm -hmm. The doctor a says after now they've had an abortion? your child, yes. That's what they tell they you happens? They never kill the child for you. That the doctor hands you they the baby just, like this? Yes. And then you have to you kill have the child? You have to kill the child. And it's the doctors who tell you that this happens? Yes, they do it. And then that's what you tell the women, if you go, you're going to no, have to I do this? No, I don't scare them. Right. I only present something on the table and the decision is yours. That's the official line. Pregnancy help centers are just offering information and girls make their own decision. We wanted to see what counselors said to vulnerable girls when journalists weren't present. So we went undercover. A local journalist colleague posed as a teenager who had been raped. Along with a woman posing as her aunt, she went to a center that houses pregnant teenagers called Wakisa Ministries. <laughs> Like Pregnancy Care Ministry, Wakisa is also affiliated with Heartbeat International. Right away, the counselor launched into an alarmist anti-abortion strategy. The next day, the counselor dialed up the intimidation tactics, even threatening the aunt with murder charges. She then claimed that most girls she sees lie about being raped, despite the fact that Uganda saw record numbers of rape reports during the recent pandemic shutdown. We found similar coercive tactics employed at two other centers we visited while undercover, both affiliated with American organizations. None of these centers responded to questions about our findings. In Uganda, as in the U.S., CPCs skirt the law by registering as Christian charities instead of as medical providers. This means that even though many provide ultrasounds and medical advice, they can't be regulated by the Ministry of Health. Even within the context of its conservative government, Uganda's own health ministry says these practices are out of line. So we visited a CPC in Jinja, and they were very open and gave us some of their materials. I just wanted to get your views on them as a medical professional. Wow. So why would they be showing this to the young girls? To scare them? Ooh, no, 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 no. This is way out of our, what we do. But I think it's also taking advantage of these young people. It's misinformation, definitely. I think, basically, it's an abuse of their rights. 
definitely is illegal. Do you think then there could be criminal implications for people who are not referring these victims onto a medical setting? Well, yes, definitely. We, we've had incidences where girls have had to lose their uteruses because of these delays. It's their right, both the families and the parents, to have the right information in the first place. Part of the pitch of these centers is that having a child shouldn't end a teenage girl's education or job prospects. Many offer job training as part of their services. But mothers who've passed through these centers told us that in reality, there's little follow-up after the child is born. At Wakisa, by their own estimates, only 137 girls out of nearly 2,000 have returned to school. Ruth Mueva left Wakisa five years ago after giving birth to her daughter. She's been unable to turn the skills she learned at the center into a job. Do you feel like the people at organizations like Wakisa should be doing more to support you after you have the children instead of just while you're there pregnant? So if you were to go back to 16-year-old you, in the same situation, would you make the same decision? One of the main players driving the expansion of CPCs in Uganda and globally is thousands of miles away in an Ohio office park where Heartbeat International is headquartered. Today, a total of 83 countries are part of the Heartbeat International family. We celebrate each, each and every country for the champions of life that have arisen to champion the gift of life and the giver of life. The group says it backs over 3,000 centers around the world. Heartbeat also has ties to the U.S. political right. They push for new abortion bans and have received millions in donations from far-right groups. By your own estimates, more than half of the pregnancy centers globally are likely affiliated with Heartbeat. Where do you see your role in having some level of oversight as to the kinds of services and just information that these centers provide? We certainly don't have the ability to wing ourselves around the world and, and monitor everyone. That would be uh, a very tall task and nearly impossible. There's some online courses that they take, but after that, it's really up to them. So let's take the case of Uganda. Sure. It's a conservative country. That being said, a commissioner at their own health ministry told us that pregnancy centers, including the Heartbeat Affiliate ones, are damaging the efforts of her ministry to protect women and girls. That is her word, and I don't know of any center that is damaging I'll women I'll tell you a few of the things that she said. She said, people take things more seriously when they come from foreigners. She said, girls have lost their uteruses because of delays caused by crisis pregnancy centers, and that they're encouraging a culture of misinformation there. We provide accurate information. If, if there's if that's not happening or if there's some actual allegation with evidence otherwise, then we would want to understand that. But do you feel some level of responsibility? The responsibility that we feel is that we provide good training to these affiliates and that we ask them to follow the training. And so our, that's exactly the responsibility that we feel. From the centers that we visited, we certainly saw scare tactics employed at all of them, including handing out photos of fetuses, saying this no. fetus looks like it's been burnt, but it was really aborted. And it no, was... that's not a scare tactic. That's an, that's an information tactic, because that really happens. So in your trainings, do you encourage 
handing out photos or models of, of aborted fetuses. We provide a, a lot of information about what abortion actually does, and that includes uh, showing photos and, and understanding what the results of an actual abortion are. The worst thing that happens when we can't chase down all this information is that a baby is born. What do you have to say to those girls who say, actually, this was a bad decision for me, and the worst case situation wasn't that a baby was born, but that my life was ruined? I understand that we can look back with regret on any decision, maybe even many decisions, but no future difficulty can be leveraged to suggest that, that somehow that child is any less important. But these mothers feel as though they've sacrificed their own and they, lives and their futures, and their, their entire futures. happens futures. all the time. That's what motherhood is all about. There's a level of sacrifice to every decision to have a child. I want to be Rema, not to wait for the, any boy. What do you see for yourself in the future? Do you feel like that's something you can still do? No. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.